you guys Jiu because Jiu Jitsu. We're going to go over three different chokes from the back that are all collar chokes. And the great thing about them is they all flow well together. So if one isn't working, it leads to another one. And if that's not working, it leads to another one. You can kind of cycle between these in a series. All of these in and of themselves are very high percentage finishes from the back. So if you were to skip to one, that's it doesn't really change the percentage of outcome depending as long as you can get those details right when you're doing it. So we'll start with the first one, which is going to be the bow and arrow choke. All right, so for the bow and arrow choke, it's going to be a cross collar choke on your choking arm. Choking arm is always going to be the one that's over top of the shoulder. This one, I'm not going to be doing any choking with. So sometimes people get dyslexic and they'll pass a collar here. You're not going to be doing anything useful with that right there. You need one over top here so it can pull against the neck. And this one is going to be like lassoing a cross or, or um, noosing basically his neck here in a turning motion. So we're actually going to change position for this one. The bow and arrow itself is an extremely highly used high percentage finish. It's last time I heard still the highest percentage finish in competition for IBJJF from the back. So if I get this cross grip here, one thing I want to note, when I'm grabbing this cross grip for any sort of lapel grab choke here, I want to take this underhand here, the control hand, and flip it like this. I want to flip the collar here so that I'm grabbing it with fingers in it. It gives a nice little handle to pull against. If I'm pulling against it flat, it, it pulls out a little too easily. Plus, it, I overwork my fingers to try to hold that flat surface. If I roll it like this and grip, now I've got like a rope that I'm pulling in. It's a very, very tight grip that they're, uh, they're going to have a hard time stripping. So for the bow and arrow, I want to make sure I'm not too high up or else I won't be able to turn the corner. I'm going to leave like a fist distance from his throat and that's fine. Once I got this grip, I'm going to now reach with this underhand, bringing it out for his knee down here at the pant. I can grab the pant if it's there. Um, you can cup the leg uh, if you can't grab the pants, but I like to grab that right at the knees on the outside. Now here's the trick. I'm going to turn 90 degrees to pull this around. I need to keep this elbow low here. I don't want to flare it like this because his out is getting his head underneath that noose before it tightens up. And he's going to be going for that, so I want to make sure that I keep my elbow low as I turn the corner. So I grab the knee, I'm going to open my hooks up and turn, keeping my elbow low. And as I turn 90 degrees, I'm going to clamp basically a closed guard over his far arm. It doesn't sound important, but it actually really amplifies the choke on this one. So don't settle for this right here. I want this. Okay, we're going to be pulling in right here. And now this is where the name comes from, the bow and arrow. We're going to basically stretch him here and here. Like we're stretching a bow and arrow. And it chokes really hard across the throat. So one more time. Roll. Catch. Find the knee. I'm going to keep my elbow heavy as I turn, clamp the arm, and then pull in with my legs and extend like this for the finish. Okay, the next one we're going to go over is very similar to that, except in this scenario, I either can't or I don't feel like grabbing for the knee. So I'm going to basically stay in a very similar position without that twist. So I roll, grab just like before, but instead of taking this arm out, I'm going to be stretching him back like this and trying to get my arm that's already underneath to his, his elbow area here and then pulling up like this. I need him to be like asking the teacher a question way up here. Pull way up and then karate chop behind his head and then this scissor like this. I've heard this called a hanger choke. It's essentially a loop choke from the back. It's a rear loop choke. So we're here. I've got this already. I'm going to extend him back and then make him ask the teacher a question and karate chop behind and scissor my arms right here for the finish. The last one we're going to be going over here is going to be uh, trying to get that hanger choke or that rear loop choke, but we're having a hard time bringing his arm up. So we've got this here and he, uh, he's keeping it tight, maybe he's got a grip right here. I can't extend up and I really need his arm up like this for that choke. It doesn't very well work otherwise. So I'm trying to get that, but I can't. I'm going to switch to what we call a hell choke, where I'm going to take this shin here, turn like I'm going for a bow and arrow, but put it behind his neck right here. Okay, now I'm holding on to his arm for the same reason that we held on to the leg and the bow and arrow, is to stop him from rotating away. If I didn't have that grip that I just pulled, he just spins out, it just unties. So we need an anchor point to hold him this way when we pull that way. And we're going to add this shin as a backstop to his head to really rip this choke on. There's a reason they call it a hell choke. It doesn't feel very good. So again, we roll, grip, we're trying to get this, it's not working, so I'm going to spin around right here just extend 
This hand doesn't really have to karate chop anymore. I'm just keeping it as an anchor on this arm as I extend for the finish. So there's three collar chokes from the back that all kind of line up together depending on what you're doing. Uh, which one you want to start with, you can hit them in conjunction, back and forth. If you really tie these into your game, you can have a lot of finishes with them. So I hope they work as well for you as they do for me. Um, if you got any questions, drop them in the comment section. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe for the next one, and we'll see you then.